Dog food and heart disease? This is an update from the FDA. Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. Click there to subscribe, hit the bell to sign up for notifications, and then when you click the link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book. Recently, the FDA held a meeting with academics, industry representatives, veterinary scientists, giving them all an update on the current state of the investigation into dog food and DCM. Fortunately, FDA guy is here to answer your questions. What is DCM? DCM, it's called dilated cardiomyopathy. It's a disease of the heart muscle where the heart muscle walls get very thin, the heart gets enlarged, leads to congestive heart failure. There has been a link shown to diet. It's now called non-hereditary DCM. And this is unlike the hereditary form of DCM, which is most often seen in veterinary practices. First, I'd like a little bit of an update. Now, how many cases are there of dogs having DCM specifically linked to diet? The numbers, so between January 1st, 2014 and July 31st, 2020, the FDA has received 1,100 confirmed reports of dogs developing DCM linked to diet. Of those reported cases, 280 of those dogs have died. Do the diets reported to cause DCM in dogs, do they have any commonalities? Most of those foods reported to have caused DCM in dogs have legume, also known as pulse-based ingredients. Ingredients that include peas, lentils, etc. Legumes, including peas, lentils, etc., they've been used in pet foods for many years. Um, and there's been no previously reported problems, but further analysis by the FDA's Center for Veterinary Medicine has shown this potential causative link. Is the FDA going to continue to name brands of dog foods associated with DCM? No, we're not going to continue to name brands. To date, has the FDA currently requested any recalls with pet foods associated with this non-hereditary DCM? No, we're not going to be issuing any recalls. And is this an issue only with grain-free diets? No, this issue has been seen with both grain and grain-free pet foods. It's not exclusively grain-free. How long is this going to take? And more importantly, what do I as a pet parent do? Like, do I keep feeding my dog this food or not? How long is this going to take? Well, in my favorite jargon, this is kind of an ongoing collaborative venture. It's going to take time. It's complex. It's multifactorial, meaning, I don't know. What do you as a concerned pet parent do? Huh. Sorry, I can't help you. Yes, that was a little bit of tongue in cheek, but what do I take away from that you know, interaction, at least that sort of updated report from the FDA? Well, fortunately, yes, there's a small number, increase in the number of cases. So my sense is this isn't a huge concern. Is there look like there is some type of causative link between diet and heart disease? Yes, there is. It's pr pretty teeny, teeny small. If your dog is doing really well on a grain-free legume diet, you know, i.e. what I feed Tula, she eats instinct as part of her diet, it's kibble. It's got legumes in it. I'm not about to change it. If you have a breed of dog, i.e. a golden retriever, which seems to be the ones which is the highest correlation between diet and DCM. Talk to your veterinarian, talk about getting a uh, blood taurine test, even consider supplementing with taurine. I hope you are doing well. I hope your pets are doing well. Love to hear your feedback, your comments. Um, please post a comment after today's video. Thanks so much for watching this edition of Veterinary Secrets. Click there to subscribe, hit the bell to sign up for notifications, and then when you click the link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book.